So I've decided to kind of just stick to what I started off in the first video where I say that phase one and phase two are all happening in the bone marrow because that's where all of your blood cells originated, originally came from. Um, and then for phase one, well, what we have here is pro-B cells and then pre-B cells are formed later. But first, is there's pro-B cells. Then after we have pro-B cells, if those guys are successful, they will develop to become pre-B cells. So in pro-B cells, the name of the game, if you were to keep going at 37,000 feet in the air, <laughs> um, what we're doing is we are having heavy chain I'm just going to abbreviate that as R. Heavy chain recombination is taking place in the pro B cell stage. Um, and there's two, I guess, sub-stages that are happening. I'm really stretched that one out. Um, at the pro B cells. There's the early pro B cells and then there's the late pro B cells. Now, in the early pro B cells, we want to do the hardest job that we can get, can, can get that out of the way. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to combine the D and the J segments of the heavy chain loci. So once we combine those two, then we're going to pro progress to becoming late pro B cells, which late pro B cells, I think as you can imagine mechanistically, um, this is where we have DJ combining with uh, the V of the heavy chain. So I'm going to abbreviate those with tiny little H's to indicate that it's happening of the heavy. For the pre-B cells, and I guess I feel like doing this in gold for whatever reason, um, this is more or less all about the light chain recombination. I'm going to abbreviate that as R-circle. I don't know, but if you ever look on the back of your insulin bottles, if you work in healthcare, you'll see that there's a little R next to that, and that's what that means. That's from recombination. And for pre-B cells, it's kind of the opposite of what you would imagine in terms of stages. There's the large pre-B cells are the more, uh, I guess, the less mature form, and then the more mature form of pre-B cells are known as small pre-B cells. And for the large, we're going to go ahead and just turn off recombination at the heavy chain. So I'm just going to say off heavy R, heavy recombination, and we're going to start activating um, small uh, uh, light chain recombination which leads us to the, the actual small the actual small pre-B cell. So in the small pre-B cell, um, we have just that light chain recombination, but there's uh, kind of a, some series of events that we want to go through here. So the first thing that we're going to do is kappa. But first we're going to try on the kappa genes uh, of your mom, and then if they don't work, we'll try the kappa genes of your dad, or vice versa, I'm not a sexist. Uh, <laughs> the internet, wonderful place. <laughs> Um, and then if, if this is great, if this works, if this gives us a functional light chain, then we are going to, uh, we will move on. I'm just going to say move on for now because we know what the next steps are going to be. Um, but if this doesn't work, if this is bad, if the protein is not functional, then we will try with lambda. And if the lambda genes are good, then we're going to be able to move on. But if both your mom and your dad's lambda genes are bad, then that B cell is going to die by apoptosis. All right, cool. It's going to move on, in case this wasn't obvious, as a immature B cell. So the next thing that I kind of wanted to mention is the actual, just the effects of recombination having um, on, on our phases. Before I do that, I really wanted to just kind of just, I guess I didn't write it out, but I, well, I guess I'll stress it now, that is that this and the early pro-B cells, we have recombination happening at the same time on both the maternal and paternal chromosome sets. And the main reason as to why this is, as to why this is something that's, if we can just get past this, we'll be okay, is because for the D segments, the D segments are going to give functional proteins when it's read in all three possible frames. So I know I wrote that kind of small at the bottom, but just know that the D segment gives a functional protein when it's read in all three reading frames. And then for the later ones that we have happening here, these are going to be only one at a time. And then if that one doesn't work, then we'll move on to the other. If this is good, then we'll move on. And then if this one is, say the first one was bad, then we can try the other. We'll go to the other. And if the other is bad, 
if the other is bad, then we're, we're going to end up with apoptosis and die. Now, so that's how that's what's happening there. Once we reach the pre-B cell stage, though, um, the, the notes that I wanted to kind of just make also kind of reiterating the, the effects of, of recombination, both at the, at the pro and at the pre-B cell stages as well, though, um, but more or less because of, of the heavy chain gene segments. Um, because of this junctional diversity, so I'm really going to just kind of blame the junctional diversity more so than others, but it happens in, in other segments as well. So we that as junctional. Um, but because of this, we can have reading frame shifts in two-thirds of the time will not be successful, and only one-third of the time will be successful. So two-thirds will fail, and then only one-third will pass. And if I was teaching a class, I would not want those odds. So now let's talk a little bit more about the pre-B cell receptor. And... Um, the first thing that we want to do is, so where we're at, I guess, in this context is where, where we just got through making a, being pro-B cells, and now we're starting to progress to becoming pre-B cells, hence the name pre-B cell receptor. Um, and the way that, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our immunoglobulin heavy chain is functional, and it will be able to bind to a light chain at all, uh, aside from. So I'll just kind of clarify that this is immunoglobulin heavy chain quality inspection. Make sure that it's going to be able to do the job that it's given. And this works in part by the use of something called a surrogate light chain. Because remember, we're not going to be able to make a heavy chain or make a light chain until we've proven that we have a functional heavy chain. So we have to use, a, I guess, an intermediate tester. So if a surrogate light chain, and it's just what we had said, that we're going to test if the heavy chain with the light um, and there's I'm gonna color coordinate the two sections of it um, the f first part of it is the V pre B that's the name of the protein that's involved in that and then the other one is known as lambda 5 oh I can draw lambda better than that but <laughs> anyways so V pre B is uh, structurally similar, so analogous if you can think of it, to the light chain uh, variable region. I don't know if there's any homology exists between the two. It, it may or may not. It would certainly make sense if these are like vestigial structures from when we had something that wasn't as effective for this, but um, anyways, yeah, what we know is that it's structurally similar to the light chain. Light chain variable region. Light chain V region, whereas with lambda 5, uh, what we do know is that it's variable, or that it's, uh, sorry, similar to uh, the constant region of the light chain. And this is what kind of pisses me off, is the fact that it's completely bass backwards in terms of, of sequences, uh, or in terms of termini, with that of the actual light and heavy chain. So in this, the C region is the N terminus, whereas the uh, variable region is the C terminus. So you're probably thinking, why the hell did I even mention this? Is because these two things here, these two termini, are going to play a large role in later on in the process of signaling, and then I'm just going to put this as slash, um, at the least, dimerization. The other thing that I wanted to mention would be the actual um, processes of allelic exclusion and then other transcription factors. So for the transcription factors that are kind of showing up in the very earliest stages, um, there's, I'm just going to go ahead and, and clarify that they are known as E2-alpha and then EBF. Yeah, I, weird, right? Anyways, these two guys are going to come together. They're transcription factors that result in the transcription of the transcription factor that's known as PAX5. And if you remember way back in general biology, I think we talked about PAX6 gene um, and how that's really similar to Drosophila and codes for eye development. Um, but that's not the case in this. And this PAX5, um, which I'm sure has other roles in terms of development as well. Um, but in this, this is going to give us unique uh, B cell receptor or B cell proteins known as CD19 and then Ig alpha, which you should already know what alpha is, but CD19 for me was not something that I was superly familiarized with. Anyways, for, for allelic exclusion, there are two things that are going to happen to ensure that we have allelic exclusion. And in case you don't remember what that is, that's where you have cells expressing only one copy of, of a gene, only one out of the two copies of a gene that they have. So say the 
gene that's just on the maternal chromosome or just on the paternal chromosome. It doesn't really matter. So the way that we do this is, I guess we have allelic exclusion that we have that's before the BCR assembly, the B cell uh, receptor assembly. And then we have actual chromatin condensation, chromatin condenses. Um, this stuff kind of all really kind of revolves around the formation of our RAG complexes. So we're going to have, we're going to stop transcription, and then we're going to break down the protein of the RAG, the RAG proteins themselves. So those wonderful proteasomes we've already learned about. For chromatin condensing, we're going to have, that's an arrow, methylation, and we're going to have uh, histone deacetylation. Acetylation. Anyways, chromatin is going to condense so the proteins can't get in there and do their things.